So this is my Kenwood THD74 connected to a JTAGulator. See a bunch of wires coming out of the right hand side of the uh, radio there. This video is going to show you how I connected all those wires to the radio, how I routed them out. Um, this issue that I found with the JTAGulator needed a pull-up resistor um, so it could discover one of the JTAG lines. Um, it's some detailed posts are available on, uh, on the Richesum wiki. I'll put a link down in the description. So let's take a look at uh, how I connected these up. So this video, I sped it up a bit because watching someone solder is kind of boring. Um, so what you see is this tiny, uh, tiny footprint on the circuit board there. I'm, at this point, I don't know what it is, but I'm assuming it might be a JTAG. I see some labels, like you see that RTCK upside down there to the bottom uh, right of where I'm soldering. Um, that's commonly something that uh, you'll see labeled around like a, a JTAG port. So I initially try soldering to some of these pins. You'll see they're very tiny. That uh, that solder I'm using is a very small gauge and the tip is very, very fine. And so I'm trying to clean up some bridges. I think about using this solder braid, but it's just a, it's a bad idea. So I get some flux. Um, if you're going to do any kind of small surface mount work, flux is pretty much required. And so when you uh, when you heat up the solder with the flux, it just causes everything to flow very smooth and nice back onto the pads. And uh, whatever little bit sticks onto the soldering iron, you can kind of almost wipe it off like you see me doing there and, and clean it up a bit. So I have a bunch of these small 30 gauge wires um, so very fine and and they can all fit pretty much side by side There's about 10 uh, 10 connections here, but I don't need to solder to all of them because a few of them are all ground uh, You'll see on detailed pictures on the the wiki where I link below of this circuit board So you'll see three of them are ground. So I'll just quickly see here solder wires to all of these so I made the very first one red because I I uh, toned it out and it was connected to a positive supply rail and the third one's black there because it's connected to ground and the rest of them I'm just trying to use a, a unique color. I don't quite have enough unique colors so you'll see me uh, I came up with a marking scheme for them a little later on in the video so really at this point I don't know what any of this stuff does in the radio I just noticed that there's some interesting things to to connect to so that's what I'm doing so all of these unique pins that are here I'm going to solder some wires to them. You'll see the one labeled, my fingers covering it up right now, but SCRX and SCTX, as soon as I get this wire soldered here, there you see right up there. Um, those look interesting. Anything labeled TX and RX for transmit and receive is usually a serial port of some kind. So I decide I'll solder a couple wires onto there to see if I can figure out what that is. Um, you notice I'm trying to feed the iron there between all the little connectors and the wires so I don't melt anything while I'm trying to do it. What you can't see is on my face I'm, I'm wearing some glasses and I have a, a loop on, so a jeweler's loop. So I'm kind of getting my head pretty close there. It's out of the frame, but um, that's how I'm kind of seeing how I work on everything, especially soldering all those tiny wires on that, uh, that connector there, all of them next to each other. Um, just to make sure they don't bridge, you know, there's no no uh, joints connected between there. On the back here, you see these three square parts um, surface mount chips. They were underneath a shield, so that dark white line that's on the circuit board going around it was a metal shield that was covering everything. Um, and so I initially just wanted to see what the part numbers were of all the components underneath there. And then when I got to it, I saw there was a couple test points. Um, they weren't labeled, but since it was kind of under this uh, hidden shield that you couldn't get to, I thought it'd be interesting to connect some wires to them and see if I could discover anything. So I got a Sharpie because the challenge now is I'm going to run all these wires out of the radio, and I had to use a, a bunch of them a few times. So I shared the white wire, the yellow wire, um, the green wire. So what I've decided to do is to put... Um, you know kind of one dot on the first set there two dots on the second set and then three three marks on this uh, third set of wires here and then on the other end of the wires um, you don't see me mark them 
but I did the same thing so when I pull these through the radio and get them out the other side then I know um, I know which ones are which I also twisted them together try to do as many things to make my life simple uh, I had a little uh, super glue here uh, the super glue just helps us kind of strain relief you know connect it to the board connect them all together so as I'm pulling everything through something doesn't uh, break loose a little bit I tore some uh, I tore some paper here and just use it to try to soak up the excess um, glue that was on there um, you know just so it'll dry quickly so now we're gonna reassemble it I stored all the parts in this little blue tray it's a uh, it's a tray used for watch repair um, you can get them on Amazon and uh, at like a you know watch repair website so I start with this board in the chassis up top you see me putting the screws in there that's the transceiver board and in order to take it out of the chassis I actually had to desolder um, the pin that goes to the antenna port so I put the screws in you saw me tighten them all down I'm now resoldering that uh, that antenna connection there's some very tiny surface mount parts near it so uh, you just have to watch out when you're doing that you don't bridge anything or heat anything up um, so here's all the rest of the parts the screen that's the shield you just saw me set down that did cover the processor for now I didn't solder it back on just because I wasn't sure if I was going to remove all this stuff after I do my initial testing so I didn't want to put it all on that little square port you saw me pointing to right there that's where I'm gonna run the wires through it is the port that had a power connector that would go to charge or power the radio I believe just powered I don't know if you can charge through that port or not I desoldered that connector from the top board to make room for this to go through so I have a charging base I set the radio in or the batteries so I don't need that connector and I save the connector so I can just solder it right back on the board when I'm done with all this testing it's not a big deal um, I have a good desoldering setup uh, that I use so nothing was damaged it's easy to take it off so now I'm connecting there's a GPS antenna um, the unit has GPS that you have to clip back on and then there's this little ribbon connector that goes to the selector and volume knob that you have to put back on there's also an interconnect cable you'll see it as I lift up this board here real quick um, I'm gonna clip it on there I was just trying to figure out which way the thing went on it was about a week since I had taken this thing apart and done some work so some of it was a little bit of a discovery on my part of how did I put this thing or how did I get this apart last time so I'll screw this um, this board in uh, like with anything I always do the screws you never tighten everything down as you're putting them in you put them in you get them kind of set up a little bit and then once everything's all in then you go around and tighten it the same way if you were working on a, a car putting the head back on a motor or or anything else you just never tighten anything all at once till it's all seated and everything's settled in so you don't cause any undue strain um, the part that I did mess up here is the two screws that are in the middle there they're the same screws that are used to hold down the screen you see me tightening down um, this is the last one here so I'll, I'll be taking those out in a moment as I realize you can't put the, the screen on while those are there um, so we'll feed the wires everything through these gaskets I kind of go to a lot of effort here if we're being honest putting this whole thing back together perfectly and I'm not even sure if, if this thing's gonna work at all so you know it, it probably would have been you know maybe a little less potentially waste of time if I had tried to test this thing as soon as possible before going to all the effort to put it all back together um, you know but spoiler alert it worked just fine when I put it all together so you know no big deal there but um, but probably you know just in the sense of trying to save time it would have been better to, to test it out so I'm putting this thing back together now the top part on there um, some of these pieces they have to be a little loose um, you can't put them all quite on like this top part shouldn't be fully tightened down until the faceplate goes on there you'll see me discover that later in the video I think I take this top part off like three times as you see right up right below the screwdriver there on the table that I just picked up there's that little uh, rubber looking gasket that was supposed to go underneath there um, but apparently I wasn't looking at it or just completely forgot um, these little things to tighten those down I just use a, a flathead and and you know put a little pressure on it to turn it they don't have to be super tight um, they were pretty easy to take off when I when I initially took them off so we're gonna put the screen on now it's just got a little flat ribbon connector the top part of the screen just clips onto the circuit board so it kinda just snaps into place 
and then uh, you see there's a loop on my eye that I use. It's just a two and a half times magnification. They work fantastic. They don't even cost that much. I think it was like 25 bucks at a watch repair site. You know, if anyone's interested, I'll link to it. Um, they work amazing. I, I don't use the big magnifying glasses with the lights on them and everything. I have a light on that I'm using. There you see me take the screws out. Um, I have a light on that I'm using, but that magnification on your eye, you just, you can't beat it. And if you don't wear glasses, just get something to, to, to clip on there. They make those things that wrap around your head that hold the loop right up to your eye. I don't like that. I'd rather get a pair of glasses or safety glasses that don't do anything and then put these little clips on there. Um, there I put the, the cable in. You see me inspecting it real close. I flip that down to, to lock the cable in place and now I'll put these two screws um, back in. Same thing, I don't tighten them down all the way as I'm doing it. I do each one and then once I realize it's, it's correct, then I'll tighten it down and I'll go back and tighten the other one down. So here we go. I realized uh, that I hadn't put the gasket in, so this is the second time we're going to put this part on. I'll tighten it all down again, thinking I'm 100% done, and then I'll loosen it up again later. Um, you know, the key with any of this stuff, you'll see uh, as we go, even when I put that faceplate on, I discover this is, you know, everything's kind of a gentle touch, right? You don't want to push too hard. You don't want to force anything. That's how you break something. That's how you break a little plastic clip or something else. So. You know, especially since I don't know really, you know, when I'm, when you're, this is the first time I'm kind of doing this, right? First time putting it back together. Last time was the first time I took it apart. So it's all a discovery process. Um, and you want to make sure you're just going easy and taking your time. Here I realized that they marked this. You see that little black dot and those two dots? I was trying to figure out which way this ribbon cable went. And I realized that from the factory, they marked which side's supposed to go into which end after looking at it a couple times, it's folded a bunch of, you know, wonky ways to get the thing to go, uh, to go in the case. Um, so when I was picking it up after not looking at it for a week, I was trying to think, how did this thing uh, go together? Technically, I guess I could have just reviewed my other video, but um, sitting there at the bench, I figured I'd probably figure it out quicker. So there's the round hole you see. That's where the little barrel jack would have gone to uh, supply power to this radio. Um, so it was, I figured it was a good spot to run these wires through. They all fit through pretty much just fine. It's about, uh, I don't know, 8, 10, 12 wires maybe um, that are running out of there. I think I even ran an extra, an extra ground line. So I'll get this thing on there. Got those wires there. I go to, I go to kind of clip this on the front. And, uh, and what you'll notice is at the top, what I see is that I go to kind of push it in. I thought it just pulled out when I was initially putting it together and it might have came out easier, but when I put a little pressure there, it didn't want to go back together and I didn't want to find out if I could press really hard and get it to go together. So I figured the easiest thing is just loosen these a little bit, lift that part up, um, then slide the, the front part of the case on and let it clip back down underneath those. So that seemed to work uh, just fine. I'll tighten down the the rest of these things, I think that's uh, finally now it's all uh, it's all together and everything's clipped on. So here I was just making sure everything was pressed in. There wasn't anything weird, no gaps. Um, you know, there's a bunch of little rubber gaskets. I think the thing's splash proof. So uh, even though I have all these wires running out of it, I still like to make sure I put something back together properly. Uh, you know, that I've understood how it's supposed to go back together and that all the little pieces are in their, their right place. Um, you know, I fully intend uh, to remove all this stuff when I'm done with my testing and I'd like the radio to look like how it looked before I started uh, and not like a trash version of something that someone was hacking on, right? Just kind of uh, how I like to do things. So there's only those couple screws there at the bottom that, uh, that hold it on and then it's really just, uh, you know, putting this little piece back in. It's a little cover. It clips in from the side. Obviously the bottom part won't go on. Um, because of the, the wires coming out there, but that's okay just to keep it so I don't lose anything. Um, there's the uh, the knobs and the, the antennas and everything I'll put on. These are the screws for the uh, clip on the back. At first I thought I wasn't going to put the clip on, and then I thought, ah, let's just put the clip back on. So same thing. It's like if I don't put it on, i got to store it somewhere and not lose it. Um, so might as well just put it back on the radio. These little knobs, the, the volume knob, I just put it on there and then rotated till the little red mark was at the right spot and then the channel selector knob. After that, here's the SD card that was in it. 
Um, I don't even think I'm saving anything on the SD card, honestly. It's just it was in there, so just put it back in there, and then the antenna. So now, now we're kind of moment of truth, right? I've done a lot of a lot of work. This video is a sped up version, and then we're kind of clipping this battery on, and I'm going a little slow, you know, thinking about the smoke test. You know, don't let the magic smoke out. I turn it on, radio power's on. It's like holy cow, you know, that was kind of the first surprise. Um, I go to transmit, you see the red light come on there. I was testing a little bit because I was holding it a little of an angle and sitting indoors. I didn't initially hit the repeater that I was testing, so I thought maybe something might have been messed up with the transmit, but it was perfectly fine. It's just how I was holding the radio and the fact that I was indoors on a, a rubber ducky antenna. So these wires that are all out of here now, you see on the right side of the screen, I've kind of twisted them together, the different groupings of wires. And now I have one of these SIP headers. And so I'm going to just solder all the wires onto here real quick. It'll make it easier to, to hook things up, like the logic analyzer that I initially started with, and then the JTagulator, like you saw in the image, um, and anything else. I took a couple pictures of the circuit board just to know the wiring order beforehand so I could have my phone sitting there and take a look. And then, uh, you know, in the spirit of, of doing things and making it look nice, and, you know, this is all hobby work, right? So no one's, no one's paying me. I'm not on the clock. I don't have to try to do it as fast as possible. It's just enjoyable to do a nice job, right? So I'll strip all these wires, put a little bit of heat shrink on them. It'll just help, you know, make sure you don't make a stupid mistake along the way. You don't bridge something while a screwdriver's laying somewhere it shouldn't have been or, or anything like that. So just tin all the, the connections. You see, if you look real close, I did, you know, a number of connections in a row at the top. I removed one pin and then I have the next set of connections. So these connections here are all from what I assume is the JTAG port. And so I'll group them all together in the same order as they are on the board, just so I can keep uh, keep track of everything in the notebook that I'll use. Um, so I'll, I'll speed it up here a little bit. I kind of just showed you what, uh, what one's gonna look like. We'll zoom through the rest um, because it's just stripping wires and putting heat shrink on, right? There's nothing too magical about that. Um, but it is keeping track of which wire goes where, you know, make sure you do kind of everything. You're taking your time so you get it done properly. Um, it usually goes, uh, goes faster that way. All right, so taking a closer look, you see I'm just finishing this part up here. Camera didn't quite focus uh, where you want it. Yeah, it just uh, happens to be the way it is, I guess. Um, I'll flip over to the other image you'll see on the phone. These are for the top two wires. Uh, probably didn't matter, right? Because it was just two wires that was coming off and I didn't know what they did. So I don't know why I really needed to load up the image. It must have just been kind of the, the force of habit of what I was doing before. So same thing, I I'd marked these wires a little farther. They were longer. I, uh, I kind of twisted them to keep them together. I marked them again just to, to be sure in case I remove them or something. You know, you come back later if you got a couple images and this stuff. If something sits for a, a week or two, it's you can go back and see what you've done. Um, a lot of these projects, you know, they just don't happen all all in like, you know, a, an eight hour span. It might take eight or 10 or 20 hours worth of work to kind of figure out whatever you're doing. But a lot of times it's over a few weeks or maybe a month, depending on how much time you get to work on this stuff in the spare time, right? And so the more you've marked and documented stuff, the quicker you can just come back and spend two hours and have it be two hours of productive time versus two hours of trying to just get up to speed of what the heck you were doing or thinking. So I twist all these together just to kind of also group them and hold them. And now you see the, the final result, right? That's the same thing we saw in the beginning. It's hooked up to the JTagulator. Um, there is a write-up on the uh, Richesum wiki page of the issue I found, which is why that resistor is shown there at the bottom um, in order to pull that um, test reset line high. So it's interesting if you're using a JTagulator at all and you can't find a JTag port and you think you know where it is, this is likely, uh, could likely be one of the issues. So thanks, uh, thanks for checking this video out. Let me know if you have any questions.